Today we're going to look at Magic the Gathering cards that will punish you for playing the game. You know, you're just trying to do some normal things. You want to tap lands, you want to attack, you want to block, you want to draw cards. But they're going to be a cost to it now. I'm going to start off with Mana Barbs. We've got our red three generic enchantment. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, Mana Barbs deals one damage to you for each, for every single time you tap a land. Every single individual land will ping you one time, one at a time. It's actually ridiculous. I actually think uh, the Mana Barbs players are quite evil, uh, but at least we have artifacts that we can tap into some mana. All right, let's start off with Christopher B. Really excited for this show, apparently. Spiteful Visions. All right, we have a Rakdos, Rakdos, two generic enchantment. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Okay, nothing wrong with that, but it comes at a cost. Whenever a player draws a card, Spiteful Vision deals one damage to that player. And I mean, you know, those one damages, they add up. All of a sudden, you know, <laughs> when you start reaching like 10, 9, 8, 5, 4, 3, 2 life, I mean, it feels like they're going to kill you. It eats up one little bit more a higher percentage of your life total every single time. It's two at a time. Anyway, all right. Uh, welcome, yeast. Welcome. <laughs> Mana barbs. I hope you don't tap lands or it's death by a thousand cuts. That's it. It's basically right. You're going you're gonna to get screwed one way or another. All right, Abzan with Zozu. Isn't that a combo with Mana barbs? I want to say these two go together for some reason. Zozu the Punisher. Red, red, one generic, two, two, goblin warrior. I wonder if all the cards on today are going to be red. You see, I got my red backdrop because whenever a land enters the battlefield, Zozu the Punisher deals two damage to that land's controller. Uh, so, <laughs> it's, so you know what? If you have, I know this is actually a nonbo with mana barbs, or sort of. Because you don't even want to put your lands in play. You don't even want to tap anything with lands. Once this thing's out, I mean, we're just accelerating the damage like crazy. He does not tolerate intruders. Don't get out of here. Out of my hut, says the Zozu. Uh, Ali with, hey, I hope the stream goes well. I was thinking Underworld Dreams. Dreaming, are you? Black, black, black enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals one damage to that player. Absolutely. That that definitely works. It's basically half the version of uh, Christopher B's card. That basically accelerates. You can do it the you can do it the old-fashioned way. You can have a Howling Mine and Underworld Dreams, you know, just, just to speed things up a little bit. Just to, just to speed things up. Why are we getting punished for drawing cards around here? I get punished enough for drawing cards. Drawing cards isn't free anymore. Used to be the most broken ability in Magic the Gathering. Now it's like nothing. <laughs> you're, you're scared to draw cards in 2023. All right, first super chat from Bryce. We got the Storm Cauldron. Oh, is that the one that like exiles the cards and you can cast them? Each player may play an additional land during each of his or her turns. Whenever a land is tapped for mana, return it to its owner's hand. Oh, that is, that is nothing, but I thought it was. Um... That combos with Zozu. We're just we're just building a deck as we go along here. I mean, all the I mean, we could, we're basically making like a Rakdos deck. Okay, whenever a land is tapped for mana, you return it to your owner's hand, and you if you want to replay it, so you might have tapped it, taken a damage from Mana Barbs, replay, it, take another two damage. I mean, it's just uh, playing cards. <laughs> you really are not allowed to play the game. <laughs> Do we? You know what's funny? This is sort of how magic was like a long time ago. You were punished like crazy for doing anything. You play a creature, you have to pay this huge upkeep cost on this. You want you you want to play a creature at all? Oh, it's like six, seven, eight mana. No, you were punished hard uh, in every single way. We're like a little bit more relaxed these days on what, on what we do. Yeast with harsh mentor. Very harsh. Uh, red one generic two two. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land on the battlefield, Islahan is tapping mana an ability. I don't think so. Tapping land for mana. I don't know if it's as an ability. I can't remember. Uh, if it's a mana uh, or land on the battlefield, if it's a mana ability, harsh mentor deals two damage to that player. What? 
How is this, like, not a stock... I've known about this card forever. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land on the battlefield... It, oh, if it isn't a mana ability. Okay, that's the, that's the key part. If it isn't a mana ability, you know what? It's early in the morning for me. I just got... You know, I'm not even done my whole, uh... Like, mocha brew over here. Okay, so Matt... Pl Tapping for mana, that's fine. Uh, everything else is off the board. Forget about it. You're screwed. Uh, next super chat from... Whoops, no. Gotta, gotta do it in order. We got uh, Coulter Chase. What do you got for us? It's Oppression. Finally was able to catch another live stream. Welcome, Coulter. What does Oppression do? Aha, of course. It's a... It is a black, black, one generic enchantment. Whenever a player plays a spell, that player discards a card from uh, his or her hand. So this actually is going to work out for some players. I mean, if you build your deck around the graveyard, like you play with phoenixes and, you know, the cards that can reanimate from the graveyard, you don't care. Like, you're like, yes, all right, let's just, let's, let's, let's gamble it all into the graveyard, basically. It's completely, uh... This will help somebody at the table. It could backfire. Remember, the graveyard is an extension of your hand these days in 2023. If you're not using the graveyard, uh, you're not even using magic to its full capacity. Anyway, oppression. Uh, I'm, I personally will not like to play against this card. I will hate it. I got to make sure I don't actually cast anything. Yeah, it's actually uh, been eroded to do not cast. No casting around here. Okay, uh, whoops. Uh, toilet Duck, Burning Earth. We got a red three generic enchantment. Whenever a player taps a non-basic land for mana, Burning Earth deals one damage to that player. A non-basic land. So it's basically a safer mana barbs, but still mana barbs nonetheless. Notice how all these cards, they're all black and red. All the black red, all the Rakdos players, they're a-holes. I mean, this is the a-hole colors. We haven't seen anything from blue, white, or green, or barely. You know, if you play green, it's my, green is the most broken color, but somehow it's like the most fair in in a lot of ways. All right, next up, we, okay, as as was previously spoiled, we got Rated Lex Portcullis. You don't want too many creatures in play. Oh, you're gonna punish me for playing creatures? The most fundamental way of winning the game. Four mana artifact. Whenever any creature comes into play, if there are two or more other creatures in play, set that creature aside. If Portcullis leaves play, put the creature into play under its owner's control. What the hell is this? Okay, hold on. What is the errata to this? Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if there are two or more creatures on the battlefield, yeah, you exile it. So you just, uh... So it's like, so nothing new can enter the battlefield. This is an insane card. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if there are two or more creatures on the battlefield, exile that creature. Like, if you have two big creatures on the battlefield... And everyone else else has crap? You can just lock the board with this. Hey, what am I missing? This looks like an oppressive... This card looks insane to me. It's, um... I, I don't even know what to compare this to. Because you, you just... Because nothing new can hit the board. You have to, like, kill your own creature in order to get something new on the board. So if everyone has, like, garbage... I don't know. You just put, like, one giant commander on the battlefield. Then it's over. I... I Am I really missing anything? I mean, you can, yeah, you can, like, destroy this. But until then, uh, the will, world's your oyster. When leaves play, put the creature into play under its owner's control. Anyway, I think the, I think this card looks busted. <laughs> Commander has a lot of non-creature combos. That's true. Okay, uh, was that... I don't remember if that was a super chat or not. Okay, moving on. Stance! This might be more of a group hug thing. Oh, no, it actually... No, you're right. This works. Stand still from Tommy Siddons. It's a blue one generic. Because whoever blinks doesn't get the three cards. It's an enchantment. Whenever a player plays a spell, sacrifice stand still. If you do, each of that player's opponents draws three cards. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> so who wants to make a move? You want to make a move? Do you? No? How about you? Play a lot of creature lands in your deck. This work is a huge combo. Uh, next up, we got Tyler. Tyler, what's up? Uh, Juzam Dijin. What? I don't think this one counts. The beginning of your upkeep, it deals one damage to you. Mm. This is more of a show for punishing your opponents. 
than, than anything. I mean, it's not even really that big of a punishment. I'm going to donate your super chat, Tyler. So we're going to donate your super chat to... Queen of the Night with Stasis. <laughs> this really punishes everybody. Blue and generic. Players skip their untap steps. <laughs> I mean, this is the ultimate hoser to everything. Your lands, your creatures that want to attack, your artifacts you want to activate. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice stasis unless you pay a blue. And there's combos with this, so you just you skip your own upkeep. Or so yeah, you skip your up your upkeep, so you don't have to pay the you don't have to play the stasis, and hopefully you go infinite from there. The title says that uh, the title literally says the opposite. Way. Uh, I get the titles that will punish you. Well, it can punish you and everybody else. Okay, hold on. We're gonna edit the title. That will punish players for playing the game. Okay, I got you. I got you. you know what? You're right. I've been called out, just like I'm called out for my poor reading skills and interpretation of cards every day. You're right. We're gonna we're going to uh, we're gonna apologize to Tyler over there. <laughs> it's, but so, you know what? Somehow you all know what I was talking about. You all knew what I was talking about. Platonic liquid. All right, with painful quandary. What does this do? It is a black black three generic enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player loses five life unless they discard a card. Beautiful. Oh my god. Okay, so you have to discard cards or you lose a huge chunk of life. You know, the person empty handed is like, oh god, this is not good. I don't I don't have cards to give, damn it. You can pay you can pay in two ways. You pay with your brain or you pay with your blood. No uh no two ways around it. Remember, the cards is like your intellect. This is your this is your brain on painful quandary. This is your brain. Carlo, reparations. Reparations. It is uh, blue white, one generic. Whenever a target opponent successfully casts a spell that targets you or a creature you control, you may draw a card. Yes, that will... Yeah, it qualifies. It's just very narrow when we cast a spell that targets you. It's just like anti, and it's like it's sort of like protection. It's not so forceful, you know. People have to cast spells. It's pretty easy to play around this. Just don't target you, if you know what I mean. Ether barrier. This is more like it. We have a blue two generic enchantment. Whenever a player plays a creature spell, that player sacrifices a permanent. <laughs> Unless they pay one. Now that's a Rhystic study that you're not going to want to ignore. Do you pay the one for the Aether Barrier? Oh, oh, F me. Oh, no. Yeah, you got to sack the permanent. No, everyone going to play for that. Oh, and isn't that like a pirate? Rishidan. Rishid. Is it the same thing as the pirates? Cut. Rishidan Cutthroat says, like, whenever plays a creature spell, player sacrifices a permanent unless they pay one. When it comes into play, oh no, it's different. This is the reverse. You actually play the thing. Um, yeah. No, this one punishes you for doing that. This one works. This is great. I like this one. Next super chat from Yo Little Ted. The Polar Kraken. It is a blue, 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 a generic 11 11 tram player. With Polar Kraken comes into play tapped. Community upkeep, sacrifice a land. Why would you even play this? Also, it doesn't really go with the show. You actually, okay, so I, maybe my my uh, title was uh, not clear enough. But I hope I'll, enough people have seen really good examples that it makes sense. Okay, we'll give it to Will Anderson. The Tabernacle of... <laughs> it is a THE Tabernacle, by the way. If you look up Tabernacle of Pendril Vale, sometimes it won't show up. No, we want the at the tabernacle at Pendril Vale. One of the most obscene lands ever created. I don't even know why they made this card. This is stupid. It, it, it was originally printed in Legends. So very early on. They, very early on, Wizards was telling people, you playing creatures, you're an idiot. Uh, at the It's a legendary land that all creatures have at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice this creature unless you pay one. So for as many creatures you have in play, you have to keep paying the one. Not to mention, there is so much land destruction back then. You had the wasteland, you had strip mine, stone rain. 
It's hard to pay that one. But also they had Moxon back then, so it's not too bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, who, who you played with creatures back then? You were a chump. You were an absolute chump. Uh, Miss the Mister Flosh, a uh, deep sea, uh, deep sea kraken. Blue, 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 seven generic for a six six. Can't be blocked. I don't know why. Not. I guess not. It's too big. It's a spend of. Nine for a blue and two generic. Okay, whenever an opponent casts a spell, if Deep Sea Kraken is suspended, oh, remove a time counter from it. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You can do nothing. You let me live for nine turns. It's going to come into play. Or you're going to play things, and I'm going to get it anyway. It's actually a very interestingly designed card. Like, it's not even oppressive. It's just a 6-6 six, six unblockable. Uh, Next super chat. We got the clarinet guy. Thanks for the content. How about Karmic Justice? How about it? We have a white 2 generic enchantment. Whenever a spell or ability an opponent controls destroys a non-creature permanent you control, you may destroy target permanent that opponent controls. Ah, Justice! You come after me, I'm gonna come right after you! Yeah, so don't, uh, don't you dare. Looking at my stuff? Well, I'm just... You take my thing, I take, you know, an eye for an eye. It's an eye for eye justice around here. Uh, Ashen Rusty with Mesmeric Orb. <laughs> what for you, uh, me okay, Mesmeric Orb. What, you mill players? Untapping equals mill. Yeah, it does. So, hold on, this doesn't really, okay, this is weird. It's not that good of a card. It's two mana artifact. Whenever a permanent comes in, uh, becomes untapped, that permanence controller mills a card. So, I mean, in Commander, like, you have 99 cards. Like, how bad is this going to get for you? Uh, however, you sort, you're sort you punished in a way because if you if it mills your good cards, you're going to be super upset. So, this is like, you know, just a frustra frustration maker. You just sniped yourself, Ash and Rusty. You, like, you just sniped yourself. This is the second self-snipe ever on uh, Coffin MTG. I just did your card. It happens, I guess. It happens. Uh, this card always messes with my threat assessment. Oh, you mean the, the other one? Uh, and anyway, uh, Mesmeric Orb. Yeah, it still works. It's good. <laughs> Makes people very upset. Oh, you made, you made me mill my Mythic! Damn it, I just spent 50 bucks on that thing today. That's how that card works. Okay, uh, next we go to an actual super chat with Mario. Zozu. We did not Zozu the Punisher. Sorry, Mario. Okay, we're gonna donate to Islarf, Lavinia, Az Azorius Renegade. Uh, Lavinia. Is this doesn't this like prevent people from being stupid? Okay, this does prevent people from doing stuff, but uh, it prevents people from being really dumb, uh, doing oppressive stuff. Okay, blue white for a two-two human soldier grizzly bear. Uh, each opponent can't cast non-creature spells with converted mana cost greater than the number of lands that player controls. All right, so you're trying to play uh, seven mana cards off of three lands? Uh-uh-uh, not around here, not on my watch. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast a counter, that spell... Oh, yeah! Oh, baby! Actually, it's funny. It's only the opponent. You actually can do all these things. <laughs> this Apparently, the rules don't apply to the Renegade. That's funny. Just realized that. Uh, someone 24C with Ank of Mishra. Oh, that one's dealing damage, isn't it? I know that. That has to deal damage. It's a two mana. When it, whenever a land enters the battlefield, Ank of Mishra deals two, two damage? It's Zozu the artifact. I just can't believe this. these cards. Sorry, that's the thing applies. Man, if you have enough of these things out, do you you know, if you have like Zozu, Ank of Mishra, Mana Barbs, you're taking like 9 damage uh, from your fetch lands. No, 10 damage from your fetch lands. You gotta pay a mana just to fetch. You pay a life just to fetch with your fetch lands. It's ridiculous. Okay, next super chat we've got from uh, Ryan. Thanks so much for Ryan. Was Shieldred the Apocalypse already done? It hasn't! This is actually, yeah, a modern day card. Uh, that is really punishing people for just existing on the battlefield. Like, I'm... We have to draw a card every turn, and I'm gonna lose two life. 
It's a black, black, two generic, four, five, Phyrexian Praetor with Death Touch, so I can't even attack into this thing. Look how big it is. It's a four, five. Uh, and whenever you draw a card, you... Sorry, whenever the sh Shieldred player draws a card, they gain two life. And whenever an opponent draws a card, they lo lose two life. Absolutely disgusting. I hate this card in every format. What makes it worse is it's completely busted with the one ring. So the one ring, you tap, draw a card, you gain two life. Then you can tap, draw two cards, gain four. The whole downside to the one ring is completely uh, nullified by the Shieldred. This card has too much text on it. And they had room for flavor text. What a tease. Karn the Great Creator. You got artifacts? Well, now, no, 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 you don't. Four mana, five. Activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated. Forget the other two abilities. That doesn't even matter. Okay, next super chat we got from Tyler. Tyler ba uh, Bremer. Mogus, God of Slaughter. Okay, the Mogus. Mogus is good enough. Red, black, two generic for a 7-5 god. Indestructible. As long as your devotion to black and red is less than 7, it isn't a creature. And uh, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, deals 2 damage to that player unless he or she sacrifices a creature. Oh, god. The creature tax. You gotta, you gotta pay up. You gotta, you gotta give us a uh, sacrifice a lamb. We need a holy sacrifice to the Mogus. They sacrifice a lot of sheep to this damn thing. Uh, Chris P. One said Null Rod is done. Yes, I've hated Karn the Great Creator for eternity. <laughs> Never liked that card. I thought this show was going to be full of cards like Phyrexian War Beast. What is that? Phyrexian War Beast. It could. More people like you suggest them. Three mana, three, four. When it leaves, play, sacrifice a land, and Phyrexian War Beast deals one damage. No, no, this is not qualifying. <laughs> Punishes you more than anybody else. Got to punish everybody. Punish players. Hopefully more than one. Okay, Stanil with Nekuzar. Is that a popular commander? Nekuzar. Is it Nekuzar? I think it's this. <laughs> I'm not a commander player, but I think it's Nekuzar. Okay, uh, red, black, blue, two, gener two generic for a 2-4 zombie wizard. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Well, what's the downside? But whenever an opponent an opponent draws a card, Nekuzar... The mind raises deals one damage to that player so they take the damage you can draw as many cards and take no damage this is like um this is orcish bowmasters the zombie wizard as far as i'm concerned okay you sniped yourself ashen which means we donate we donate your super chats that's how it works around here but you got your card anyway it was good if anyone's gonna soup snipe you it might as well be yourself Uh, <laughs> it's the Eidolon of the Great Revel been named. No. Eidolon of the Great Revel. Red, red, 2-2, two, two, spirit. Whenever a player casts a spell, with converted man costs three or less. Eidolon of the Great Revel deals two damage to that player. Man, I mean, this does punish you badly, but boy, does it punish the burn decks as well. If you can get a foothold on the board and deal a lot of damage before they do, all of a sudden, the Eidolon of the Great Revel works for you more than it works for them. I've been in some games where I have like three life, they have one. I've got a I've got a creature land in play, they have an Eidolon in play, and they can't do anything. They can't attack because I'll kill them with the Mutavolt. They can't play a creature because I'll kill them with my I'll kill them with my creature land, which is a Mutavolt. And I just have to wait for a second Mutavolt and they die. Funny stuff. Game can be locked by their own Eidolons. Our game store has its own Eidolons now, Battlegrounds. Is that a card? It is not. Or it is. No, it's not. Alright. I got I got confused. Mr. Dead Marshmallows. Unique name. Okay, Toxrill. The corrosive. Black Black 5 generic 7-7. Seven, seven. At the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each creature you control. Creatures you don't control get a plus minus one minus one counter for each slime counter on them. Whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create one one black slug creature token. I don't think this works. Doesn't really prevent people from doing anything because you're more or less Forcing the issue I want to see some cards that really punish them or stop people from doing things It's a good card. Don't get me wrong. It's a good card. It doesn't punish people for playing the game 
Although, I guess, I mean, okay, maybe in some sense, like, you don't want to attack because your stuff can get blocked and then it dies and then stuff, crap, uh, hits the fan. Is it Pacekeeper or Peacekeeper? I think you mean Peacekeeper. Peace. There we go. <laughs> White 2 generic creatures can't attack. You have only one way of winning the game. Well, not anymore. <laughs> okay, next super chat. We got blue bombers. Um, Kataki's Wars Wage. Ooh! There's more than one way to punish people. You can punish people with damage, or you can also punish people playing artifacts. White 1 generic 2 1. All artifacts have at the beginning of your upkeep. Sack this artifact unless you pay one. That is the ultimate tax. I don't know if you've ever been on the other side of a Kataki's Wars Wage, but it's not pretty. Not pretty at all. Did we look at this one? Use the Desolation. I want to say we did look at it, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, no, we did not. It's an oldie. It's a black, black, one generic. At the begin at the end of each turn, each player who tapped a land for mana during uh, that turn sacrifices the land. Uh, if a planes is sacrificed in this way, okay, so it deals extra damage to the planes players. You're, pl you're playing planes? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you, you, we were discriminating against planes around here. Take two damage. Uh, Rainer, spell shock. Red 2 generic enchantment. Whenever a player casts a spell, just de simple deal 2 damage to that player. You know, you just deal 2 damage at a time. Very good s sound effect for this situation. If you get enough of these things on the battlefield, no, God, please, you're just not allowed to play magic. You realize that my life total is at 15. But if I play a spell, this will be definitely the last spell I have for the rest of the game. I really need someone. This is, you know, if you, there's enough of these enchantments and artifacts on the battlefield, you're rooting for the, uh, what's it called? The Cyclonic Rift player. You're rooting for them. At for, you know, it's the villain that turns into the hero. Uh, do we do? I thought I got to you, Toilet Duck. Cemetery Gatekeeper. Okay, we have a red one generic 2 1 first strike. When Cemetery Gatekeeper enters the battlefield, exile a card from a graveyard. Oh, yeah, this weird janky card. If a player plays a land or casts a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, it deals two damage to that player. So you can exile lands, so if you play, and then if you play a land, you take two damage. Again, we're getting punished for playing our lands around here. Next super chat we got from Jeremiah. Welcome. Uh, the show must go on. I have a feeling this is an unset card. The show must go on. Or it could be a Rakdos card. Uh, the show Muse go on? No. The show... The greatest show in the multiverse? What the hell is going on here? Oh, I got my uh, Super Chats mixed up. Sorry. Or sorry, my music. <laughs> it's like, that's not the end of the show. I don't know. What is this card? It's Rakdos? I don't know what it's called. Show must go. Is it Havoc Festival? But it doesn't say the show must go on. I was thinking like the show must go on sounds like sort of a, a Rakdos like card because they got them weird circuses around there. I'm, I'm sorry, Jeremy. I have no idea what the hell this is. If this is a card at all, unless you're talking about this show, and it does, and it does must go on. Rakdos the Showstopper is that an actual card? Rakdos the Show. That's the opposite of what we were talking about. Okay, what does this card do? Okay, it's a reference to the last time I referred to you as looking like Freddy. Oh, <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch that one to be honest. So we'll we'll make this the honorary. Is this does this work when Rakdos the showstopper enters the battlefield? Flip a coin for each uh, each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp. Destroy each. Oh my goodness. Um, but it doesn't really count for the show. But you know what does count for the show? Sponsors, sponsored segments like FusionGamingOnline.com, my favorite sponsor, where I can get 20% off all heavily played and damaged singles. That's the deal of the week this week. Uh. 
But you know even more exciting than the deal of the week? Lost Caverns of- where is that? Lost Caverns of Ixalan is coming out. And boy, do they have some banger cards coming out. They just put a stifle on a merfolk. I can't believe they did that. That's insane. That's his oracle. Your days are done. Your days are numbered. And you can get all your cards at Fusion Gaming Online and support the channel using coupon code Nikitra at checkout to get 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Manitraders, the premier place for renting magic cards online. Because when a new set comes out and shakes up every format, you want to play test every single deck that's possible to know which one is the right deck for you. Or to just play a deck that's winning! Because some people out there, they care about that more than anything. When you rent with Mana Traders, it's cheaper to play more decks than ever before. If any of your cards get banned, that's okay. It's a banned list saver. And you can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore XQJ. All right, back to uh, some punishing cards around here. the hell is this <laughs> what is that related to i must have missed something here okay uh bulky price of glory we got the red two generic enchantment whenever a player taps a land for mana during another another player's turn destroy that land oh good god do like counter spell player that's we're looking right at you it's probably how they thought that they could balance uh the stupid control decks at the time counter spells were like pretty good back then because there was like not that many uncounterable things there they had a little bit of stuff you know they had a little bit of uncounterable stuff they had the creature lines but it wasn't really enough okay next super chat coming from ryan uh War ward of bones Word of Bones is a six generic artifact. Each opponent who controls more creatures than you can't play creature cards. Uh, that the same is true for artifacts, enchantments, and lands. Isn't this like just like a reversed balance in a way? So I don't know if you can wrap this up with a lot of artifacts. If you're an artifact deck with a lot of artifact mana. And like Ancient Tomb, City of Traders, you can just lock the game really quickly. Like turn one, I don't know, Ancient Tomb, Soul Ring, turn two, City of Traders, Word of Bone. I don't know, play one creature, Word of Bone, and it's over. Or even play Word of Bone and play a Planeswalker after that. You don't, need, you don't even need creatures. This card's pretty insane. I've never heard of this card before. The more you know. We did oppression, Cosmic Seeds. We did oppression. Uh, Xavier's Defense of the Cart. We didn't do that one. Defense of the Heart. Green three generic enchantment during your uh, during your upkeep. If one or if one or of your opponents controls three or more creatures, sacrifice Defense of the Heart. Switch your library for up to two creature cards. Put those creatures into play. Shuffle your library. Yes, that's right. You're locked to two creatures for the rest of the game. This actually reminds me of um, Oath of Druids. Um. So this one feels very punishing. So I've been playing a little bit of Vintage lately. And this, I hate playing against this deck. So it is, it's an enchantment for two mana at the beginning of each player's upkeep. The player who chooses... Anyway, if you have more creatures than the person who has Oath of Druids, or like whoever has less creatures than everyone else, they, they reveal cards on the top of their library until they find a creature. And it's usually something busted. It's like a Traxa or a Grizzlebrand or something. Uh, so anyway, if, you, if there's no creatures out... You feel like you can't do anything. I hate this card. So we're going to do the Havoc Festival all of a sudden. Havoc. Did we do this one? No, I don't think we did it. Oh, this is... A, oh, I think I looked at this card. Okay, we have uh, red, black, four generic enchantment. Players can't gain life. That's looking at you, you white and green. Uh, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses half their life rounded down... We cannot control enemies who have no regard for their own survival. Well, okay, I mean, if you need to get the game over within an hour, if some people... This is, this is actually a good solution to the people who play, like, two to three hour commander games. <clears throat> this will, uh, this will even things out, that's for sure. Dang, says Steven, absolutely. I would say dang as well. Platonic Liquid. Thanks so much for the super chat. Jingataxius. Is that the OG Jin Jingataxius? 
progress tyrant. Oh, you want the progress tyrant. Okay, which one does... I can't remember what this one does. Seven mana for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Praetor. Whenever you cast an artifact instant or sorcery spell, you copy it. You may choose new copy targets for the copy. This ability triggers only one each turn. Whenever an opponent, however, casts an artifact instant or sorcery spell, counter that spell. This ability triggers only once each turn. Love it! I love these Oreo like cards. Unban Oreo! Unban Oreo! Give me Oreo! I can feel the uh, the energy coming from uh, everyone. Where's my boo is this my booing sound effect? Yeah, this is it. I don't care. I don't care. Give me a Rayo. I guess I can have Jin Gitaxius instead. All right, Jay Jones with Mana Web. The Web of Mana. Three mana artifact. Whenever a land uh, target opponent controls this tap for mana, tap all lands they control. That pr that uh, can produce any type of mana that land can produce. I, I guess it works. If, especially if they're like quite monocolored. Uh, the, the, they'll be tapping out every single turn. Mavericks here for the first time. Thanks so much. I love that you can show up. There are thousands of you that watch this show. Thousands. But not only about, a, you know, 200 to show up every morning. Okay, who who hasn't got a card yet? Uh, I don't think Stranger Candy got one yet. Okay, Hirobi. Deaths. That's how it works around here. We gotta, we gotta pass around the cards to everybody. Death's Whale. Black, black, two generic for a 4-4 four, four spirit. And as flying, whenever a creature becomes the target of a spell or ability to... Oh, God. We destroy the creature. Oh, the poor thing. Everything, everything's fragile. Everything turns into an illusion, effectively. Whenever a creature becomes the target. You know what? I don't think this really counts. Mm. Your opponent could just opt not to target their own... Like, very often, we're not targeting our own creatures. I guess it punishes maybe, I don't know, the Boggles player. But not really. I mean, we'll punish the Boggles player, but it will not punish a whole lot of players in general. Okay, Coulter Chase. Uh, what do you got for us? Demis into Dream. We got the blue six generic enchantment. Each creature opponent's control is an illusion in addition to its other types and has, when this creature becomes the target of spell or ability, sacrifice it. This is actually very similar to this last card. Like, like it, I don't, how does this punish you? Like, I could see a whole game going by that this card does nothing. Illusions suck. <laughs> you just put the fear... Well, I guess it just puts the fear into your opponents like uh, it, it could be punished. Because if you... I mean, this has great synergy with a deck that you target stuff. But your opponent can just do things anyway. You know, they can play lands, they can play spells, they can play creatures... Uh, I mean, may maybe I'm not, maybe I just haven't played enough commander. Maybe there's a lot of commanders that want to target their own creatures. So may maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe this counts. Uh, but like from my, in competitive magic, you, ch you're a chump for targeting your own creatures with anything. It's, you know, it's like giant growth. How good is that? Not very good. Okay, next. Moat from the Mr. Flosh. You got moat. You got create. Well, they can't attack. You got them creatures. It's over. Not so fast. Creatures without flying can't attack. That's actually fair. Creatures without flying. And apparently also uh, creatures that can swim can't attack either. Iris. Plague. Sliver. Black, black, two generic. All slivers have at the beginning of your upkeep. This, cr this creature deals one damage to you. No. Just, how does this affect your opponents? This only affects you. It doesn't prevent you from playing the game. Well, I mean, this this sort of sucks for you, the actual player of the playing the game. We've updated the title. Cards that will punish players for playing the game. Ideally, your opponents. Ideally. <laughs> what do you want? Re if you want? Oh, you want Moat the uh, Moat reprinted. Okay, next up, we got Jay. Jay with the Super Chats. Uh, half hour behind, Leon and Arbiter. That's more like it. Okay, other people want to search their library for anything? You're going to get taxed by the Le Leon and Arbiter. You got to pay up that mana. Our people are torn. 
by in fighting uh by in fighting until the two sides reconcile our laws can carry no meaning Sideboard against Slitherin. <laughs> Jeff trying to uh, save this card. Yeah, you could bring it in against the Sliver player. This is anti-Sliver. All Slivers at the beginning of your upkeep. This cre Ima Imagine that. Imagine you're a Sliver player and you're up against, I don't know, some sort of like Rakdos deck or something. And they all of a sudden play Plague Sliver against you. That would be, that would be such an absolute beating. That would be psychologically backbreaking. It's like... I mean, hey, your local game store, if there's like only eight people that show up, you know you're going to play against those players regularly, so why not? Yeah, Iris uh, clarifying. It's a sliver counter. One life is a small price to pay for killing someone in your playgroup. Okay, I accept that. You know what? I respect. I didn't realize uh, that this was more, this was anti the sliver player. And they come out with like a sliver commander deck every like five years, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be good for fair. Also, hate against changelings, which are also slivers. So you got a you get a two for one deal there. Okay, I take I take it back with the plagues uh, the plagues it's plague spitter or sliver, plague sliver. Okay. All right, we got Boulder with a uh, val valak at the molten pinnacle. No, it doesn't count. That one's completely under your control. Mm. It doesn't even punish you. <laughs> Only punishes the opponent. Punishes the opponent for you playing your stuff. We're looking at cards that punish the opponent for doing things. Uh, we did Mana Barbs. Obnixilis Unshackled. He's unshackled, and he's out for blood. Okay, we have a black, black, four generic, four, four demon. Flying trample. Whenever an opponent searches their library, that player sacrifices a creature and loses two life. What are you, nuts? That is crazy. That is absolutely bonkers. And can't you force your opponent to set, like search their library with like a demolition field or something? Field of ruin. Whenever an another creature dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Obnixilis unshackled. That's insane. This card is underrated. 10 life is a lot of life. Unbelievable. Iris says, I had a sliver deck a, a while back that everyone knew. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, you felt that pain, huh? He's naked. Oh, he, he is naked. Uh, it's... it's uh, <laughs> they couldn't make a full art version of this one. <laughs> the full art would be censored. Censored by the, the rules tax as it is. Keldon, Rurik Thar. Ru oh, that's that's right. It's not easy to get Rurik Thar the Unbowed in play, but when you do, it's a 6-6 six, six Vigilance Reach that attacks each combat. But whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, Rurik Thar deals 6 whole damage straight to your face. Uh, <laughs> Life though is a resource, but I, it's, it's not. it's going to go quickly at like 6 and 10 at a time. Crowny says, considering how often I search my library, that card is my kryptonite. Oh, your crypt. Everyone's cryptic kryptonite. Who doesn't search their library these days? Oh, did someone get sniped? Who got sniped here? Okay, Boulder, one with nothing. That is also not really part of the show. It doesn't work. But you know what? It is a super chat. And we're going to donate it to somebody. Because you are uh, a donating Andy around here. Okay, let's give to... Six holes worth of damage? What? What is going on here? Richard Smith, Doom Foretold. White, black, two generic enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. That player can't. They discard a card. They lose two life. You draw a card. And you gain two life. And you create a... What the hell is going on? You get so much stuff out of this. And you create a 2-2 white knight creature token with Vigilance. Then you sacrifice Doom Foretold. Oh, it's only one. <laughs> I thought this was going to happen every single turn. That would, that would have been absolutely nasty. But hold on. This is... I don't think it, anyone does anything. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player... No, it actually doesn't count. It does not punish people for doing things. Uh, and also doesn't prevent anyone from doing it. Well, it sort of prevents... You know, I'm fine with stasis, but this is like, it's basically like sorcery, make your opponent, uh, like, sack stuff. 
One set player sacrifices a non-land token. Oh, if they can't, do you know what? Okay, this works. Okay, so if they can't sack something, then it gets even worse for them. In a way. Crossed back to basics. I like that one. F your lands. Oh, you want you want to uh you want to have a greedy mana base? Well, screw it! You have all the greedy mana base you want, but they don't untap. It's a one-shot deal. You tap for you tap for mana and then no more. Uh, next up, we've got Blue Bomber. The bluest of all the bombers. Yurlock. Yurlock of Scorch Thrash. You better pay exactly for... Is this the spell? Scorch Thrash, you better pay exactly for your spells. How does this one work out? Okay, we got Jund 1 Generic for a 4-4 Vigilance via Shino Shaman. Uh, a player losing unspent mana causes that player to lose that much life. Ah, be careful with your infinite mana. You better use it all or you're going to... Well, so it brought mana burn back. Player losing unspent because lose that. <laughs> mana burn is back on the table. Uh, you can also pay one tap. Each player adds Jund mana. Oh my god. Yeah, mana burn's back on the table, baby. Unbelievable. Turiat with Dovesca uh, Dovescape. Uh, this is Azorius, Azorius, Azorius. Three generic enchantment whenever a player plays a non-creature spell. Counter it! And that player puts X11 white and blue creature spell bird creatures onto the battlefield where X is the spell's converted mana cost. Yeah, punished you for playing spells. So basically, no one gets any spells anymore. You just get birds. You just bird it up. Uh, next super chat coming from Jay. Counterbalance, but counters in general. <laughs> This one, this one, yeah, this one's awkward. It's, uh, it's also a bit iffy, because you may not counter anything. So it's like a gamble. Okay, I'm going to cast my spell. Hopefully there's nothing stupid on top. Uh, and then whoever plays something first. Okay, let's read the card. Enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may reveal the top card of your library. If you do, counter the spell. It has the same converted mana cost as the revealed card. So uh, you are punished for actually playing something first. Well, I mean, you're gambling. Maybe it resolves. Maybe it doesn't. But then after someone plays a spell, then everyone else can play spells because you know it's like a two drop or a three drop on top. You just don't play that spell. Uh, next. What do you guys have here? Let's go back to Christopher B. Booby trap. You're going to get tarped. Six mana, artifact, as booby trap comes into play. Name a card other than a basic land card and choose an opponent. The chosen player reveals each card he or she draws. Then, when the chosen player draws the named card, sacrifice booby trap. If you do, booby trap deals 10 damage to that player. So you get punished for drawing a card that it names. When it comes to play, name a card other than a basic land and choose an opponent. That is so weird. I guess you play... I don't know if this works. I don't like it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel prison-y enough, if you know what I mean. Okay, next up is Xavier's Super Chat. Punishing Fire is called, if yes, Rurik Thar. Uh, we didn't do Punishing Fire, but I don't know if Punishing Fire works. Oh no, it does. Oh, it does. Yeah, that's right. You want to gain life? Well, I got my Punishing Fire back. Okay, red one generic. Deals two damage to target creature or player. Whenever an opponent gains life, which we all know you people love to do, you're not going to be gaining life in the, in today's show. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> you can pay a red if you do return punishing fire from your graveyard to your hand. Usually you force in competitive match. Usually you force your opponent to gain life so you can get this thing back. Say soul ring with the uh, booby trap. They only have one soul ring in, in soul ring in their deck. Uh, who hasn't got one? Uh, Bitter Blossom definitely does not count because this only affects you. Okay, uh, okay, well, everyone gets a second super chat, I guess. Okay, old boy. Oh, where's old boy? I missed you. Oh, I lost you, old boy. There we go. Uh, Orborea is especially fun in Commander. Green, green, two generic world enchantment. Creatures can't attack a player who didn't cast a spell and didn't put a card onto the battlefield during his or her uh, last turn. How does this work? Creatures can't attack a player who didn't 
cast a spell and didn't put it. Oh, so if you don't do anything, this looks great for a control deck. So you cannot attack the player who is doing nothing and saving all their mana. Who didn't cast a spell. Oh, but if they play a counter spell, then you can attack them. During, during their last turn. Interesting. A very interesting card. I like it. Pretty cool. You could just opt to do nothing. This would be, I guess this would be good in a lands deck. Just play lands. Lands is my win condition. Okay, next super chat. We got Richard Smith around here. Children of the Apocalypse. We did that one. A card I detest. I agree. Uh, and shouldn't have been, should have been banned in testing. If it's already been said, then Turgrid's Lantern. There we go. You guys know in the second half of the show, you gotta, you gotta name more than one card. You never know. Okay, Turgrid's Lantern. Oh, sorry. No, this is Turgrid God of, uh, God of Fright, which is a menacing. Whenever an opponent sacks a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. But we're going to talk about the Lantern. Tap. Uh, target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discards a card. And also, you can untap Turgrid's Lantern. So, you're forcing people to discard their stuff. Target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent. I don't like it. It's like, it's too active. It's like, you're making them do the thing. You're not prevent. They don't get... See, the, the t point of the show is you're punishing people for playing the game. I don't mind the Shieldred one because drawing cards is part of the game. Uh, and also, you want to draw cards. But you're actively making them do this thing or they uh, they lose. Stormseeker. Okay, we donate the super chat to Storm to Toad. Stormseeker. We have a green three generic instant. Stormseeker deals damage equal to the number of cards in target player's hand to that player. That's what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness. You want to draw a bunch of cards? Oh, it's an instant. <laughs> so okay, anyone who has reliquary tower. This is like the anti-reliquary tower card. And they made this in Legends. In some ways, this shouldn't really count, because this is like a proactive play. But uh, I'm going to make an exception to this card, because it punishes the players who want to, like, you know, they play Reliquary Tower, and they have, like, 30 cards in hand. Yeah, it's Juicy Green Burn. They don't have, green doesn't have a lot of, have a lot of burn cards. This is one of them. Turgrid works if you look at the front side and are playing uh, against Aristocrats. That might be true. We did Mana Barbs and Mesmeric Orb already. Uh, Felix! Polluted Bonds. Blue, blue, three generic enchantment. Whenever a land comes into play under an opponent's control, that player loses two life and you gain two life. Exactly. That definitely works. There's so much land hate out there. You know, just one at a time, you play, like, Polluted Bonds. There's so many of these cards. Lanterns, the battlefield. Screw them and, you know, benefit you. Platonic Liquid with Choke! Oh, my goodness. It'll give you a better Super Chat sound effect than that, though. Yeah, I get punished. I get punished for playing Islands. You get to tap them once, and that's it. And then it's over. Uh, it's totally, totally true, actually. Ristic Study actually definitely works for this thing. Ristic Study. Oh, no, I guess it doesn't punish them. You know what? I don't count this one. It actually... It, it's, like, more of a benefit to you than it, like, punishes you. They're Acid Rain. You came after my islands? Well, I burn your forest down. <laughs> that, that's probably the story here. Oh, you, you choked me out? Well, now I burned down the forest. It's over. Acid rain. It's funny. This is the only, like, mass basic land destroyer that uh, is on the reserve list. Somehow this one's broken, but, you know, flash fires and choke and, like, those are fine. That's BS to me. Complete nonsense. Always a bigger fish. Captive audience. Punch them for having turns. Oh, yes. Okay, we have red, black, five generic captive audience enters the battlefield under their control of an opponent's, of, oh, of an opponent of your choice. At the beginning of your upkeep, you choose one that has been chosen. Your life total becomes four. Discard your hand and each opponent creates five 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. I will absolutely accept that. 
Okay, next super chat we have uh, Capital Punishment. What is this all about? This is a real card. It's a black, black, four generic. Council's Dilemma, starting with you. Each player votes for death or taxes. Doesn't, doesn't sound like we have any good options here. Uh, each opponent sacrifices a creature for each death vote and discards a card for each tax vote. You're punishing people for voting one way or another. We did Mad Barbs. It's the first one. We started the show with this. Yeah, Eidolon's been named. We're good. There's a few really common cards that haven't been named yet. Uh, Avon Mind Sensor from uh, Freecade. Punishing you for searching your library. And it, and it will swoop in at just the worst moment. A 2-1 flash flying creature for 3 mana. If an opponent would search the library, the player searches only the top 4 cards at library instead. Boy, by the way, you can totally brick. You can be very cl close, but no donut when uh, looking for your card. Ooh, black. Uh, does black fight? Black fight. Toads understands the show very well. Come on, let's look at black. I think black vies worse. Works. There's a one mana as it enters the battlefield. Choose an opponent. That's right. Okay, so at the beginning of the chosen player's upkeep, it'll deal X damage to that player, where X is the number of cards in his or her hand minus four. So, uh, you what? So it punishes you for playing your cards because if your lo cards go too low, you start taking an insane amount of damage. All right, Bryce with the knowledge pool. So what super chat do I give you? I'll give you that one. How does knowledge pool punish though? Knowledge pool, pool of knowledge. Knowledge. Uh, okay, it's a. Six mana, imprint, uh, artifact, enters the battlefield. Each player exiles the top three cards of their library. Whenever a player casts a spell from his or her hand, the player exiles it. Just punishes you from doing whatever you want to do. If the player does, he or she may cast another non-land card, exiled with knowledge, but without paying their card's mana cost. This is, this is more for the cha like chaos ensues players. They just want to watch the world burn. Uh, okay, Rainer, uh, Zufall with Wars Toll. Red, red three generic enchantment. Whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, tap all lands that player controls. And then if an opponent, and this really works with a lot of cards that will d uh, damage you for tapping your lands. If a creature an opponent controls attacks, all creatures that opponent controls attack available. Oh God! One I. I saw something stupid. Phyrexian Obliterator stops people from wanting to attack you. Hold on. Um, you know what? I'm going to count this one. This is, a, this is a very funny card to have on defense. Because whenever you deal damage to the Phyrexian Obliterator, the source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. It's almost like, it's almost like a propaganda, you know what I mean? Propaganda, you pay you pay mana with Frexian Obliterate, you 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 pay with all your um you pay with your permanence. Alright, next super chat. We've got Jay. Uh, what's up, Jay? Next gameplay stream when? Uh it's random and it's on Twitch. But it'll happen probably next week. I don't know when. It's when I feel like it, when I have energy. Because I don't have energy, I don't do gameplay streams. And then uh, we donate that super chat at the very least to did your super chat go through probably yeah it did don't worry it's going in order I do we have a system here super chat then freebie super chat then freebie that's how the system works then after an hour it's only super chats so we can get on with my day uh, does fairy hero of dominaria do anything I don't think so what to fairy hero of dominaria no that doesn't count there's, there's like no, nothing on here that will punish you for playing yeah we did Ilon. we did not on we did obnixilis apparently obnixilis is naked complete bare butt going complete commando around here the emblem whenever no it's whenever you draw the card you as a player the opponent like it doesn't matter Emblem don't count. Blood Chief Ascension. Uh, 
Black enchantment at the beginning of each end step. An uh, if an opponent lost two or more life this turn, you may put a quest counter on this thing. And whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, if Blood Chief Ascension has three or more quest counters on it, you may have that player lose two life. If you do, you gain two life. Uh, whenever a card is put in an opponent's graveyard. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, if from anywhere, if you play instant sorceries, your creature gets blocked, you, you crack a fetch land, you, you lose two life. Also, you can also force your opponent to put cards in the graveyard. That works also as well. All right, it's time for the super chat, super chat, uh, super chat world. Okay, blue heart, orange heart. Well, the 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 name also matches the avatar. Roiling vortex or um, curse of the Saken faith. I don't think roiling vortex would count, but curse of the shaken faith probably does. Curse, curse of Shaken Faith. This card exists, right? It does. Excellent. Red, one generic enchant player. Whenever enchant player casts a spell other than the first spell they cast each turn or copies a spell, Curse of Shaken Faith deals two damage to them. You make sure you don't get out of line, you storm player. Storm, storm going to be held down. All right, next super chat, we've got Stephen Hope. Oh, what do you got for us? Price of Glory. Or Portcullis. We did Portcullis. We didn't do Price. Oh, no, we did. Do we did both of them. Sorry, Stephen. You got super sniped. Your backup also uh, was already done. So we will donate the super chat. Also, Portcullis is an amazing card. I had no idea that card existed. I think that thing's insane. To donate your super chat to, has anyone not got a card here? I don't know if I got one from Michelin. Primal Order. Bitter Blossom only hurts you, doesn't hurt anyone else, even for playing the game. Primal Order for a green, green, two generic enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Primal Order deals damage to that player equal to the number of non basic lands he or she controls. Whoa! That is wild! This is a Homelands card. This is a Homelands banger as far as I'm concerned. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, it deals damage to that player equal to the number of non-basic lands they control. That is so many cards. I think this card, I think it danger. This card, it da I think this card's busted. I think this card's in, in just insane. I've never heard of it. Uh, if only you could put this in a burn deck somehow. The green, a green burn, Green Burn is assembling itself today. It's probably the best Homelands card. The best Homelands card I've never heard of before. Okay, next super chat. We've got Coulter Chase. What do you got for us, Coulter? Donating a super should do a passive punishment card. Okay, who wants? Okay, we go back to the uh, yeah, domain players. They don't like the look of the Primal Order. Guru, you get the super chat with Dissipation Field. I think I know what this card is. It's a blue, blue, two generic enchantment. Whenever a permanent deals damage to you, return to his owner's hand. So, uh, you want to come after me? Or, actually, or, or is it anyone? Whenever a permanent deals damage to you. Oh, no, it's just to you. All right, you want to come after me? All right, your stuff gets bounced right back to your hand. You, you attack with a token. Poof, it's gone. Has Blood Moon? Actually, Blood Moon has not been mentioned. Hey, you snuck in a freebie. It's the, it's the super chat second half. Okay, it's uh, red to generic, non-basic lands or mountains. It'll punish everyone except the red players, truth be told. Okay, Anders, uh, what do you got for us? Uh, Nekusar the Mind Razor, we did that one. Pretty sure we did Nekusar. Yeah, we did that one. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was another super chat, actually. They said Nekuzar, which means we are going to give a freebie to somebody, and that freebie is gonna be... Actually, I don't know. We got, do we get one from you, Alpha Nerd, today? Cody. Alpha Nerd and Toad's avatars look the same to me from a distance. Uh, three mana for a one, four construct. You can't cast permanent spells. Just you? Pay four tap. Uh, Wooberg, whenever you cast your next spell each this turn, exile top. Exile cards on the top of your library until you exile an instant or sorcery card with lesser mana value until end of turn. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put each other card exiled this way on the bottom of your, uh, your library in a random order. Technically, this only affects you. <clears throat> I want this to affect more than one person. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll counter it. This is the ultimate. 
you will not play the game <laughs> card in essence all right next super chat we'll have guru Frexian tyranny we got a Rakdos enchantment whenever a player draws a card that player loses two life unless another unless you pay two another punishment for drawing cards around here this is a new card this is actually a very old card very nice art I like the art on it don't like the old gold gold border it looks better in foil but I like the new gold border better all right next super chat we got Anders oh man Anders what do you got for us uh did you super chat this thing twice? <laughs> I'm so sorry for you, Anders. So sorry. Do you have like a, a backup super chat somewhere here? I'm going to look for Anders. This is so disappointing. This is the first time somebody super chatted a card. Okay, second super chat was meant to say don't. Okay, I'll do Okay, we're going to donate it. At least it was done on purpose. Let's go Queen of the Night. Solitary confinement. Solitary... It is a white two generic enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, sack solitary confinement unless you discard a card. Skip your draw step. You have shroud. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. You know, this, this card goes so hard on you yourself that I'll count it. Prefer cards that go hard on other players. But you, like, you, you can't draw cards. You're, and you, uh, what else? No, wait a minute. This actually is a benefit more to you than anything else. I'm disqualifying this card. We're going to donate the Super Chat to somebody else. Birdie's here. Hello. I love your streams. Just started watching your vlogs. I have vlogs? Who are you watching here? My vlogs? What vlogs? <laughs> I barely have vlogs. Unless you count this as a vlog. It's real life around here. Unless, you could, unless you're looking at some, like, really, uh, some unlisted stuff. There's more than one Nikachu on the internet, I'll, I'll admit that. There is more than one Nikachu on it. Oh, not vlogs. I meant the VODs. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have we have VODs to, for years. Enjoy. Um, let's go with... Okay, Tirod didn't get so many today. Kervik. This is interesting. Some of you know every single card. On which Kervik? The Merciless? There's a lot of care of it cards. So, like, there's, like, four of you that are just spitting out millions of cards. And most people are like, I don't know what to put on this show. Seven mana for a 5-4 human shaman. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, care it, deals damage to e equal that spell's mana value to any target. Oh, God. So, you just don't even want to cast any spells. Or if you cast spells, it's got to be small. Small enough, and it, will, and it won't kill anything that's already on the board. That's awkward. That definitely works, though. All right, the Darkest Angel. Very dark username. Long time lurker, first time poster. Just wanted to say hi and love your streams. Oh, you're welcome, Darkest Angel. But we're going to donate your super chat, too. What's Grave Pact? From Maximilian. Black, black, black. One generic enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature. Disqualified. Doesn't really prevent your opponent from doing anything or playing the game. Uh, does Island Sanctuary? Island. We're going to find out. We're going to know in a minute. Today's a hard show. I've used the buzzer. like I've buzzed a million things today. White one generic enchantment. If you would draw a card during your draw step. Instead, you may skip that draw. If you do, until your next turn, you can't be attacked except by creatures with flying end or island walk. It's like a moat. Actually, I guess it prevents people from attacking you. So maybe this does count. And maybe the solitary confinement sort of counts as well. Because it prevents people from actually winning. Okay, you know what? I take it back. Solitary confinement is good on my list. Prevents people from winning via attacking. It's like a, the ultimate propaganda in a lot of ways. Oh, I'm going to count these cards upon reflection. Some of these cards do work out. Platonic Liquid. What do you got? What do you got? Obnixilis, the hated twist. You'll have your Obnixilises. The hate twisted. He found pants. 
found him in the dumpster, like the homeless person he is. Okay, he's a black, black, three generic, five loyalty Nixilis. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Ob Nixilis will deal one damage to that player, and also minus two, destroy a target creature. Its controller draws two cards. I want to say this card is a little bit underrated, but I guess it's five mana, which is what makes it like a little bit. Also, you know, <laughs> I'm not. I don't really feel like making my opponent draws two cards when they destroy when I destroy their creature. We did oppression already, Tyler. Uh, okay, blue ball, blue, blue heart, orange heart, chaos wand. I think for some of these, you gotta, you gotta give me a, you gotta give me a reasoning how it punishes people. Punish them for having good spells. Orange heart gives an argument. Three mana artifact, pay four tap, target opponent, exile cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put the exiled cards that were cast this way on the bottom of that library in a random order. Huh? Huh? Punishes them for having good spells. Target opponent exiles cards on the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card. You may cast the card without paying the mana cost, then put the exile card that weren't cast this way on the bottom. Oh, okay, I see. But like, but not for playing the game. Okay, that's definitely a disqualification. Like, they didn't cast the card. <laughs> this definitely doesn't work. All right, we'll, we'll, low high. Okay, uh, we're gonna donate the super chat then. Uh, we are. Gonna give it to Abzo, Lisa. Shrouds of Dusk. Black, white, white, two generic, five, five angel. Rather than pay two for each previous time you've cast this spell from the command zone this game, pay two life that many times. Uh, also flying lifelink. Whenever a player casts a spell and they lose two life. I'm sure today someone could make an was it uh, a mar some sort of lethal Mardu deck that just plays all these cards. All right, we've got a uh, Utsuhu Price of Glory. I swear we've done that one. Part of the infinite combo. Is that the Red Enchantment card? It is. We did this one. We've in fact we've done this one three or four times today. Price of Glory seems to be a very very popular card. Oh, uh, how about to Kruznik? Oh, hold on. let's give it to Ander. Ander has donated like a million times and didn't really get anything. Fevered Dreams. Sorry, Fevered Visions. Poor Anders. <laughs> Was it, is it Fevered Visions? Or is it Fevered Dreams? Let's look up just Fevered in general. See how many Fevered cards there are. Can't be that many fevered cards. I think it's fevered visions. Uh, at the beginning of each player's draw step, uh, sorry, at the beginning of each player's end step, that player draws a card. If the player is your opponent and has four or more cards in hand, fevered visions deals four, two damage to him or her. Yeah, punch them for not playing out their hand. You get them one way or another. Oh, hold on, we're not done. I got some super chats still to get through. The show ends when the super chats end. Okay, crust. <laughs> You're the crust to the, the bread of someone else here. Not Narset, Parter of Veils. Uh, by the way, my first pay to win comment ever. Uh, love you as a friend and love your content. Welcome, crust. Thank you so much. Uh, not enough people named all these planeswalkers. Blue, blue, one generic, five loyalty. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So the people who love to draw cards, they get slammed right in the face over this. Also, minus two, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non non-land card from among them, put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Results may vary. Okay, and the last super chat from Stephen Hope. Overabundance, or Mana Gorger Hydra. Overabundance. Uh, it is a green, red, one generic enchantment. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, that player adds in one additional mana to his or her mana pool of the same type, and overabundance deals one damage to them. That's too bad. You take one you, every single time that you want to tap a land, have all the mana you want. This could backfire on you. Like you give every, you give everybody double the mana. That's one additional mana. I think the ben I think the, it's the you know, <laughs> judging the cost reward situation here, the it benefits you more than when it costs you. Augie with 
Zozu the Punisher. Except we did that one. Oh, did we do Zozu or Zuzu the Punisher? I think we did this one. Yeah, we did this one. Which means we are donating your super chat. We're donating it. Who wants the last super chat around here? Uh. I swear, did we do? I don't know if we did Sulfuric Vortex. Well, on, let's. I'm gonna give one to Round Wave Crusher because I don't know if Round Wave Crusher got a single card today. Vorin Clex, Voice of Hunger. It's eight mana, seven six Trampler. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana of uh, your add one mana your mana pool of any type that land produced. Whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, however, that land does not untap during its controller's next untap step. Freeze it up. Freeze it up. Oh god, I really want to put this one here. Chill. I, I love this card. Red spells cost two more to... If you need an answer to the cards punishing you on today's list, you go buy yourself some chills. Most of them were basically red cards today. Punish the red players for punishing you. Alright, that's it uh, for today's Coffin MTG. If you want to be part of the show, you got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks to all the support. Oh, I feel the warmth and the love through the Super Chats and also the memberships, patrons on YouTube, memberships on YouTube, the Super Chatters who are part of the show. And we got to thank the coffee crew for showing up in the morning, like Mr. Deadhead, Christopher B. Rain, Toads. Oh, God, we have a random Super Chat. We did get tax. We did that one. We donate another Super Chat. I'm going to eat it. I'm gonna eat the super chat. We gotta give it to somebody. Okay, we have one more random super chat here. Did we say Agent of Mass? We did now. Oh, uh, we got, uh, what is this? A black, white, three generic, two, three creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses one life. You gain one li game life equal to life lost this way. I guess they, <laughs> they got punished for being in the game. So we're going to also thank uh, Toads, Anders, Ali, Safi, Kruznik, Steve Cooper, Steven, Mario, Uts, Utsuho, Botonic Liquid, Toads, Round Wave, Crusher, Abzo, Old Boy, Some124C, Jess, Mr. Deadhead, Toads, Abzo, I think I've never mentioned your card, you guys before, but as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next